So I guess this means I have to refilm the intro for this video. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to my video part one all about my summer favorites. I originally filmed this video in the middle of last week and at that point I recorded this whole intro focusing on the fact of making sure that I tell you guys thank you for subscribing to my channel because at that point I had over 300 subscribers which to me felt like a lot especially since at the beginning of like summer and COVID I only had like 99 and I just I'm so grateful for all of your support with all of my projects and videos. And by some crazy turn of events, I now have over 800 subscribers here on YouTube and my mind is seriously blown. So thank you guys so, so much for subscribing to my channel. It seriously means the world to me. Honestly, you guys make what I do so much fun because the fact that I get to share my love and passion with you all and hear why you like it, why you're interested in it, how you want to get into sewing, etc. just makes me so happy. And the fact that there are over 800 of you who somehow think my life is interesting is just so cool. Um, so basically i wanted to say thank you to all of you for subscribing to my channel and supporting what i do um and that was basically my intro that i had to refilm because the intro that i filmed last week literally made no sense for the video that is coming out right now anyways so like i said today's video is all about my summer favorites i am going to have two different parts of this video so i'm going to have another video where i focus all about my favorite skincare and beauty items because that is a whole other thing in and of itself but this video is going to be focused on my favorite books and shows and lifestyle related things social media etc basically just a random culmination of a lot of my favorite things this summer so anyways i'm really excited to be sharing all of these with you guys um i would love to hear from you if any of these are your favorites i think that's one of my favorite aspects of social media is connecting with other people who have similar interest um to yourself and it's always interesting to hear from others and see what they like what they don't like if they have suggestions based on your interest and so yeah i can't wait to dive into this and share all of my favorites with you all so without further ado let's get started Okay, let's dive into today's video. My first culmination of favorites is going to be fashion and style focused. There have definitely been a lot of favorites when it comes to fashion and style over the summer, but also I feel like I haven't been able to live my fullest fashion and stylish life. Um, not that it's anything all that exciting. I just love dressing up and having places to go to wear the clothes that I put on and not that those places that I'm going to are like incredibly fantastic or whatnot. Like literally I will dress up to go to the grocery store. Um, but basically, yeah, you guys know we haven't really been leaving our houses and there's really like no place fancy to go. There's like no parties, no events, all that stuff. So anyways, aside from the fact that I have not had places to necessarily wear all of my clothes, usually the summertime, um, I have a lot of fun places to get dressed up for. That hasn't been the case, but it has not stopped me from discovering different styles that I have liked and just diving into the realm of fashion and style. So let me turn it to my list. I have made sure to write up a list of all the things that I want to talk about in today's video. So first and foremost, um, I feel like there have been so many trends that have come out this summer or spring to summer and I have absolutely loved them. I feel like this season trends are just like really spot on and unique and I feel like there have been a lot of trends that have come come back around um and so one of my favorite trends is the strappy sandal sandal trend um don't have a ton of them but i'm definitely a huge fan of like some type of sandals or heels in the summertime and so i did get a pair um of strappy heeled sandals slash heels about halfway into like quarantine and covid um have i worn them anywhere no i've just worn them to take pictures but i cannot wait till i get to wear them somewhere but anyways those shoes are these adorable nude strappy heels um they are steve madden and i got them off of amazon i actually got them when they were on major sale so that was totally a reason that you needed to buy them because they were on sale um but i absolutely love these i think they're one of those styles one because of the color they go with anything i feel like the great thing about strappy 
sandals and heels right now this season is that you can easily wear with jeans and kind of add them to a very casual look and make it look extra chic but you can also dress them up so they're a very versatile shoe they're comfortable and it's almost like very minimalistic because the straps are so tiny but i absolutely love these cannot wait till i actually get to wear them places um, but these are super super fun and I'm going to be creating a link of everything that I'm talking about in today's video The link's gonna be down below and it'll take you to a blog post on my blog with everything I'm talking about in case you want to check it out for it yourself So that is first and foremost these strappy sandals love those shoes um, My next one is also a pair of shoes. And I did get these right at the beginning of quarantine So literally I think they came in the mail like the week we weren't allowed to leave our houses um but they have been my go-to errand running shoe. I have probably worn them out to run errands literally every single time that I have gone. And they are this really cute pair of white Keds. I have always been a fan of Keds in high school. My go-to shoe were the navy lace-up Keds, like the retro looking ones that Taylor Swift used to wear all the time. Literally lived in those in high school because they went with my style so well. And so I've always loved Keds, but I've also really loved the classicness of white sneakers recently. And I know there are so many different styles of white sneakers. Um, and that's why I really love these because it's kind of a cross between Keds and Converse. And it's like, doesn't look like either one. It's kind of like their own thing. Let's see if this will focus a little bit more on them. So they have this really cute like detailing. They have this green tag and then they have the laces and I absolutely love them. They are so comfortable and the great thing about white sneakers is that they literally go with anything and think and I think that's why a lot of people like white sneakers right now because they are so classic and they are so versatile and so yeah they also have like dream foam soles so they're extra comfortable and i will definitely be wearing these um back to school and the fall when i actually get to go back all right next up on my list is the whole sheared top and dresses trend um that one has definitely been a trend that has kind of come back around i feel like it was in years and years ago and now it's such a huge thing this it was a huge thing in the spring and it's still kind of a huge thing in the summer and as you guys know if you have been around this channel for a while you have probably seen my sheared summer dress tutorial absolutely adore that dress it was so much fun to make and so much fun to share with you guys and i really really love that trend i think it's one of those trends that again is super versatile like you can get sheer tops and wear it with jeans and make it super casual but then there are so many different styles of shearing you can do with different types of dresses so i have absolutely loved that um i will like put a video put a picture up here um of me in my dress and then this is a picture of the sheared top that I made out of some leftover sheet fabric that I had. So yeah, I really have loved that trend. But again, it's been so sad not really having places to like wear these two. I've tried to get dressed like every day just to feel more like a human being. Um, but sometimes you don't really feel like wearing those really standout cute pieces because you have nowhere to go. So anyways, yeah, those are my thoughts on fashion amidst COVID. Um, outside of trends, I'm going to talk about a couple of things. Another thing that I have really liked, um, I got this at the beginning of summertime, I think. I don't even remember when I ordered it, but it is my all-time new favorite swimsuit, um, for the summertime, and this is it. So these are the bottoms. So it's a light pink swimsuit with these little red hearts, so it has these ruching. They are high-waisted retro style. And then this is the top. It is so cute. Um, see if I can pop up a picture of me wearing it. So like I said, I ordered this at the beginning of the summer. And it is from the brand Courtney Jean. If you have not checked them out, check them out. They are fantastic. Their swimsuits are literally to die for. And one thing that I really love about them um, is that they create their swimsuits in collections. So they will launch a new collection every like two to three months and that is literally all the swimsuits that are available and once they're gone they're gone and so i love the fact that they're constantly changing up their styles they're adding new prints um other swimsuits are like mixable so you can kind of just like mix the prints together but i also love the fact that it's kind of created in small batches so i think it's a great um mindset in regards to fashion but i actually bought my swimsuit when they were having their warehouse sale and i think they have that about once or twice a year and it's literally the best time to buy from them because their swimsuits um are such a good deal and 
I finally got to get one of their swimsuits and I absolutely love it. So definitely go check them out if you're interested in a little bit more modest um, swimsuits, but also kind of mix and match where you get to kind of pull the different tops and bottoms that you like. And that's really one thing that I do absolutely love about them. All right, the next thing in regards to fashion that has been a summer favorite is headbands. And surprisingly, I'm not wearing a headband right now, so let me fix that and go grab one. All right, so this is kind of like a pleated-ish looking one, and I actually got this one from Walmart. Um, I have gotten a lot of headbands from Walmart because Walmart has a stellar headband collection. Um, so anyways, I have really been loving headbands. I... I used to wear headbands all the time when I was little and then I feel like the past couple of years or just like I kind of grew out of headbands and I thought that they were kind of just too like childish and I didn't really feel like that they would be fashionable but then of course headbands came back into fashion and I realized why they're so awesome one they take just like a normal hairstyle and they elevate it two you can throw your hair into a ponytail or a bun put on a headband and you immediately have a super chic um fashionable and stylish hairstyle and also just like adds a new dimension to clothes. And so outside of headbands, um, the other thing that I have been loving, and this is very useful, especially if your job involves being on the computer a lot, or like me, um, I am a teacher, and with everything going on, virtual learning is a reality right now. So, let's take our headband off. I have these blue light glasses, obviously. It's kind of hard to see and the light but i got them off of amazon they are this super kind of light pink and they're cat eyes and that's the whole reason i got these style this style because i wanted a pair of glasses that was kind of retro and cat eye and they're so fun i was definitely the person who was always sad that she didn't actually have to get glasses because my eyesight is pretty good so anytime i have an excuse to wear glasses i'm going to take it um yes i am the person who has two pairs of fake glasses i will sometimes wear just if i'm feeling like being in a glasses mood but in this case these are very helpful for working on my computer um sometimes i'll wear them in the classroom and so i feel like they help my eyes just relax a lot more sometimes i'll be staring at my computer for a number of hours and will feel like super tired and starting to get a headache and i'll put these on and it's just way better um so yeah these have been super fun and you know if you want a really retro style totally obsessed with these you know anytime we can look even more like a grandma we're going to take it so anyways, I got those off Amazon. Amazon has a ton of other really cute um, pairs of blue light glasses. So again, I will link this all below so you can check it out if you want to see what those are. But on to my next category of summer favorites. All right, next up is books. A great, fantastic category. I could literally talk all day about books because... I love it um, you guys probably didn't know that because I really don't talk about books all that much on my channel although I have mentioned the different audiobooks that I have listened to while doing sewing projects but here's your PSA that I'm obsessed with books I own over 250 books it's probably more at like 300 now I just ordered two new books today and I have like five books coming in the mail already so yeah if that tells you anything about my love for books and reading um, I also have a bookstagram which is an Instagram for like posting about like books and stuff like that so anyways I really like books and I recently at the beginning of this week reached my yearly reading goal with Goodreads I set a goal of reading 30 books this year. I've had that same goal since 2018 and I have not met it the past two years and this year I finally met it in August, like way before the end of the year. I'm so excited, which means now I can just add on to my reading goal and see like if I can get up to 40 books this year. So anyways, that was a huge accomplishment and that comes down to a couple of things. One, just incredible books that I have found this year and also I've gotten into audiobooks. Um, I've always loved the idea of audiobooks but I really got into them this year. I would listen to them driving to school. At the beginning of the year, I would listen to them coming home. Um, and so it was a great way to keep me company on my drive to and from work. And I would get through a lot of audiobooks that way. And then once quarantine hit and I was at home, I didn't have a drive to listen to audiobooks on. And so I started to listen to audiobooks while I was working on my projects because usually when I'm in my studio sewing, I'm out there for four to five hours at a time. And so it's a great chunk of time to listen to an audiobook and get through a lot. And there are a ton of different audio 
audiobook platforms. I know a ton of people use Audible. I discovered this app called Chirp and they have audiobooks, audiobooks, wow, audio books on discount. Um, and so I will buy audiobooks for like three and four dollars, sometimes like $1.99. And so basically what it is, is authors will put in for their um, book as an audiobook to be super discounted and then you can buy it and it's basically added to your chirp library and so I love that one because I basically own it on audiobook and I can go back and listen to it anytime I want and two because I don't pay more than four dollars for a book so I will just wait for titles that I'm interested in to go on sale or I will always just look through their sale list and find a lot of really new titles that look super interesting and listen to books that way and my collection of audiobooks is literally so diverse i have things about crime and serial killers we have things about like we have historical fiction we have ya books like you name it so many different types of books so anyways when i talk about my summer favorites in regards to books i have really got into audiobooks and i would highly suggest you check out chirp like this is not sponsored by them um i just really really love their platform and i think it's awesome if you're interested in audiobooks or if you want to even just try out audiobooks and you don't want to make the commitment to like audible definitely check them out so i've listened to a lot of really great audiobooks through that and eventually I'm going to have a blog post up on my blog talking about all of the books that I've read so far in 2020 and I go through which are audiobooks and which books I actually read so if you're interested in that maybe by the time this video goes out that post will be live and I'll link it down below and you guys can check it out but I also wanted to talk about some of my favorite books that I have read and listened to this summer um, so first off my favorite some of my favorite books so it's really two books but they are in a trilogy and it's the March trilogy so these are the books um, they are graphic novels that are written about the civil rights movement and they are written by representative John Lewis um, who sadly actually just passed away um, earlier this summer and it was really sad tragedy that he passed away he was battling cancer but he was absolutely an incredible person um, he was one of the key figures in the civil rights movement um, and so he wrote these books along with a, another um, author and then an illustrator and they are incredible. Um, I really have never read graphic novels before but I am a very visual learner and so reading a graphic novel actually brought this story to life for me. And so it's set up like a graphic novel kind of like a comic book in a way and it just goes through and tells his story of being part of the civil rights movement. Um, and so the first book talks about um, the Selma and the march on the Selma Bridge. The second book talks about the march on Washington. Um, and then the third book I haven't actually read yet, but this one is a continuation of his part in the civil rights movement. And these books are absolutely incredible. I've read book one and two so far. I still have to read book three. And then continuing on with some of our favorite books. Um, one of my other favorite books that I listened to on audiobook was the book Just Mercy. Um, and that is also a movie now and I also watched the movie but I would highly encourage you to read that book and or watch that movie or listen to it on audiobook but it is written by Brian Stevenson and it's all about just the criminal justice system but how um, there are a lot of discrepancies in the criminal justice system when it comes to race and just injustices with mental health and it's a really incredible book um i love listening to it on audiobook i think it'd be a great book to read as well and then the movie was also incredible so that was a really really great one that i really enjoyed this summer and next up something a little bit more classic focused is the new release from this year called Joe and Lori and it's a romantic retelling of Little Women where Joe and Lori actually get together. So I don't know if you're anything like me if you are a huge Little Women fan. I grew up with Little Women. I would watch all the different versions of the movie. I would play Little Women Make Believe. I have always loved the story of Little Women and it's one of those stories that kind of sticks with you your entire life. You can go back to it and reread the book or watch the movie or listen to the audiobook and the story is still relevant no matter if you're like a little kid or if you're an adult like you will still connect to the story in some way shape or form and so i have a lot of sentimental value with little women um and i was honestly one of those people who was fine that joe and Lori didn't get together i understood why louisa may alcott wanted it that way but i feel like my mindset kind of started to change a little bit in regards to joe and Lori when i watched the newest version of little women 
that came out in December of 2019 um, because I feel like they really portrayed Joe as struggling a lot more with like loneliness and this desire to want to be loved. And so um, Joe and Lori is written by Margaret Stoll and Melissa De La Cruz. Melissa De La Cruz actually wrote all of the historical fiction um, YA books about Alexander Hamilton and Eliza, which I have listened to the first one and I'm currently listening to the second one and they're really, really good. But anyways, if you're a fan of Little Women, or if you were upset that Joe and Lori didn't get together, or even if you were fine that they didn't, I cannot encourage you to read this book enough. It was amazing. It's like, I feel like Louisa May Alcott wrote this, even though she might not be happy that Joe and Lori got together. It was so well, well written in the voice of Louisa as an author, and just so authentic to kind of how... Her stories are crafted and everything that goes on in her stories and I absolutely loved it. Um, I think the changes that were integrated into it were done so well and literally I was bawling my eyes out at the end of this book and I do not cry in books like very rarely do I cry about anything so the fact that I was crying at the end of this book definitely says a lot one about my connection to Little Women and Louisa May Alcott but also to just how great they did with this book so definitely encourage you to read this one and also the book itself is just gorgeous <laughs> okay um on to my next book so after joe and Lori, we have another one of my favorite summer reads which is love and gelato this is a ya book um all about a girl who spends the summer in tuscany and so she spends the summer in italy um her mom recently died she goes there to meet this guy who she's assuming is her dad it turns out that it isn't but it's kind of the person that her mom wanted to kind of be like her father figure and anyways it's kind of just about her discovering what it means to have family and what the definition of family is also discovering herself getting over her mom's death and just like dealing with the grief of that and also exploring Tuscany and Florence and I absolutely adored this book I think it's one of the best books that I've read that you really feel like you're walking with the characters um discovering and exploring the city and I think I also really connected to it because the time that I was reading this I was actually set to be in Florence um Italy and so I was definitely having a lot of withdrawals of being sad that I wasn't able to be in Florence this summer and so reading this kind of gave me the connection to Florence history and kind of discovering the city for myself so I really really enjoyed this one. Alright, I thought that nothing could top fashion and books but we might have a contender in TV shows and movies because as much as I love fashion and as much as I love books, I also love movies and TV shows and watch a lot of them. Also given the time that we're living in, I have gotten through a lot of new shows. Um, I could go through all of those and it would be such a long list, but I'm going to talk about some of my favorites. So first off, um, some of my favorite shows. So one right now, I am watching season 15 of Run Project Runway. Uh, it's so weird the fact that I'm a fashion design teacher and I love fashion and I have not seen every season of Project Runway So I have been trying to get back into those at the beginning of this year I had watched a couple of seasons because we had been watching them in class um, And my students were getting really into it So I was getting really into it also and so I went back and started watching season 15 Mainly because the winner of that season um, her name is Erin and I follow her on Instagram And she just has like really cool fashion designs and so I kind of wanted to see how she progressed throughout the show Outside of that, I started re-watching um, the TV series Bones. I watched that when I was in college and it is still to this day probably one of my favorite crime mystery type shows. I think I'm really intrigued by the science of it. Um, and so I started re-watching that and again, it's so good. <laughs> like, I'm always constantly watching multiple TV shows at one point. It kind of just depends on what mood I'm in for this sh like episode of a show I want to watch that day. And so as of late, my mood has just been to watch Bones. So, um, let's talk about two really good movies of the summertime. One, it's not a new release, but thankfully Netflix added it back to um, their movies for the summertime, and that is the 2005 version of Pride and Prejudice. And I know you might be rolling your eyes and thinking, why are you a fan of the 2005 version of Pride and Prejudice? One, the costumes are not all that, not all that historically accurate, and a lot of people just have a lot of issues with it. But the 2005 Pride and Prejudice will always be my favorite and be very near and dear to my heart because it was my 
first taste of really Jane Austen and of Pride and Prejudice. Um, it was the first version of the movie that I ever watched. Um, I watched it before I even read the book, so I have a huge connection to it. And literally anytime I hear the soundtrack, I just like melt into a puddle because it is gorgeous and beautiful and totally obsessed with that. Have I seen it multiple times? Yes, I have. I'm very excited that it's on Netflix. Do I own it on DVD and did I buy it on YouTube? Yes, but it's also on Netflix. So if it's on Netflix, you're going to watch it while it's available. So anyways, if you have not watched the 2005 version of Pride and Prejudice, go do yourself a favor and watch it while it's on Netflix and fall in love with it as I love it. Um, outside of that, we all know that Netflix released the newest, um, continuation of the story The Kissing Booth and so The Kissing Booth 2 came out this summer. I'm such a sucker for like teen romance movies especially those based off of books so any that Netflix comes out with I'm gonna watch it. Um, and The Kissing Booth 2 I watched it was so good. I honestly loved it way more than the first one. One it was super long it was like two hours and so they got to add a lot to the story too it ended way better than I thought I was. I thought I was going to be so mad with the ending and how everything played out with the characters. But it was actually like so good. Um, so anyways, I know some people who still really like the first one. And I know some people who really like the second one. But the fact of the matter is that they are making a Kissing Booth 3. Which I'm guessing is going to come out next summer. And so that's something that we can all look forward to. But yeah, that was a really good movie. Probably should go watch it for a second and a third time. Um, outside of that, I also started re-watching a TV show that I watched when I was in high school. Um, it was an ABC family TV show, now called, you know, ABC is now like freeform, but it was called Jane by Design. And it was probably the TV show that really got me to start dreaming a little bit more of maybe I could be a fashion designer um, and go into that as a career. Obviously, I didn't. I took a different route in regards to fashion, but... It's such a good show, especially if you love fashion. Um, if you were in high school, highly encourage you to watch it. It's available on the Freeform app. Okay, outside of those TV shows, I also discovered K-dramas at the beginning of quarantine. And needless to say, we have dove deep into K-dramas and watched a lot of them. And if you know anything about K-dramas, every episode is like an hour and a half. So the fact that I have probably at this point watched seven or eight different K-dramas, that's a lot of hours of viewing. Um, but anyways, two of my favorites from the summer um, were the K-drama While You Were Sleeping, which is available on Hulu. It's a super interesting plot, like um, this girl who has dreams about things that are going to happen, and then they actually do happen, but then she saves this guy who then he starts to have dreams and then they save a guy who then he starts to have dreams and so all of their dreams like intersect and connect but then they get to like work together to like save those people who are in their dreams in real life it's kind of this crazy storyline but it's super super interesting um and then the other one that i really really love which is also on hulu um is descendants of the sun if you like things that are like military and army but then also cross over with like medical it's a super super good one uh, so those were some of my favorites from this like summertime and the summer months obviously I've watched a lot so like any of really the popular k-dramas I've probably watched them so anyways that's enough with rambling about TV shows and movies. Like I said, I could continue on with a much longer list than the ones I have shared. But those are some of my favorites that I would encourage you guys um, to check out and watch. I will link those also below so you know where you can find all of those. But on to my next section of my summer favorites. All right, next up in regards to my summer favorites is YouTube and social media. So that is like people and channels I've discovered on YouTube and social media that I have really enjoyed, learned a lot from, am inspired by. Um, so first things first, I got TikTok this summer, probably in like June. Um, I never understood why TikTok was like such a big deal. I thought that all people did was just like remake dances on it because that's literally all my students do. And then I got it and I realized, one, TikTok is addicting, two, 
um there's just like a lot of really great videos and you just get tunnel vision and you realize you've been on it for like an hour and three it's also a super awesome platform for creative so there are so many people with small businesses who share their businesses on TikTok and grow their business that way. It's such a great platform for designers too. I have discovered so many incredible um, fashion designers and ethical brands on TikTok and it's just been so cool to like learn about those um, and also just to kind of like add them to my list of you know things to look into and to bring into the classroom to talk to my students about. So anyways, I totally get why TikTok is your really cool social media app now. Um, so anyways, that's one thing and I've tried to add and create different videos here and there for TikTok So like beside behind the scenes things of projects I'm doing or a quick like DIYs and tutorials. So if you're on TikTok, you can check me out um, That's my TikTok name But anyways outside of that we're gonna talk about like my favorite YouTube channels that I have discovered recently and really like and then a lot of these youtubers are also on TikTok and on Instagram so I have always been super big into skincare, but I never really like sought out, you know, people who were knowledgeable about skincare on social media or YouTube. And then I was on my like homepage of YouTube one day and I saw this video um, from Skin by Hiram and needless to say, I'm obsessed. Um, basically, he films all these amazing YouTube videos talking about different brands and just like breaking down if this brand is good or bad or talking about great products for this type of skin type. He makes a ton of TikTok videos and he's actually really famous on TikTok and it's because of his videos that CeraVe is sold out in a lot of stores and that The Ordinary is now one of probably the most purchased brands because those are two of the brands that he oftentimes suggests. So if you love TikTok, TikTok. Well, yeah, you can follow him on TikTok and go check out his videos. But if you love skincare, I have learned so much. I thought I knew a lot about skincare and then I started to watch all of these people who like work in the industry and do research on skincare and I learned I know nothing. <laughs> um, but the videos are super, super awesome. So definitely go check out Skin by Hiram. The other um, channel that I really like is a channel by um, a girl named Jess. Dang, I think um, this is her name I'll pop it up right here and she does sewing videos and DIY and she has some really really cool designs she does original designs she does um, kind of thrift flips she, she thrift thrift flipped or flipped or redesigned a pair of jeans and to a super cute pair of like overall shorts super super fun so anyways um she has a lot of really fun sewing tutorials and projects if you want to see more of those um so definitely go check her out also you guys have to know who with wendy is but if you don't you need to go check her out i adore her videos she just has such a unique take on fashion and style and diy um she does thrift flip she does fun diy projects she will kind of like redesign or diy things that have been seen on the red carpet or different like accessories and it's just things that like no one's making videos about and they're so cool plus she's just like the neatest person and so listening to her videos is like it's like calming you could like listen to her videos and just immediately like all of your stress is gone um so with wendy's videos are super super fun and awesome and i've definitely learned a lot from her and got a lot of inspiration my other favorite youtuber who also deals with style and fashion and sewing is makara tours and if you do not know who she is you are missing out um she creates the most amazing things most of them are made of like thrifted sheets um or thrifted pieces which i love and she also just has the most unique and odd personality so literally you'll be watching her videos and you'll probably be like did she really just say that or do that um in one of her videos she videos her chicken laying an egg and then she goes and eats the egg if that tells you anything about her but i absolutely love her videos they are awesome she's a super talented designer um so you should definitely go check her out if you want to see more just sewing videos um and just be inspired by what you can do and what you can create and then the other youtuber that i really really love her name is carolina zabrowski and if you like historical fashion you have to go check her out she does videos talking about different time periods um she will do reaction videos um to different youtube videos that are like 
dressing in the different time periods and she talks about like how it isn't accurate she also does like a lot of funny like parody videos anyway she's just hilarious and she has like a super like funny and sarcastic personality um so if you love historical fashion and you also want to have a good laugh definitely go check her out she has other videos where she's like getting dressed in the 1800s and she's just very knowledgeable when it comes to historical fashion but also super entertaining so those are some people you have to check out on youtube um, a lot of them are also on instagram and on tiktok so they have different content in all those other places but yeah i really up until this year never considered myself to be one of those people who like gets on youtube to like watch all these videos but I've really discovered that there is such an awesome like community of creatives on YouTube um, and just people who like love to do thrift flips and sewing and things like that and the same thing for like TikTok. So anyways, that wraps up the YouTube and social media portion of my summer favorites and on to some of my last two categories. All right, so that is a wrap on my summer favorites. Um, I feel like this video was super overwhelming and just like all over the place but anyways um, I thought it would be fun to share with you guys some of the different things that I have been loving this summer um, for my favorite books and shows and fashion styles etc just so you guys can get to know a little bit more about me um, leave me a comment letting me know if you have read any of these books or seen any of these shows or just generally our favorites of any of the favorites that I have shared today so thank you guys so much for watching this video and also thank you for just like subscribing and following along with my channel and all of my videos and my crazy creative life it means so much to me don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you aren't already subscribed and make sure you can stay up to date with all of my latest videos and projects in the future and again you can always follow me on all the different social platforms like instagram twitter and tiktok but without further ado that's a wrap on my seven more favorites so thank you guys for watching and i will see you all next time